Slava Ukraini! In the brutal Ukrainian conflict, the country's military has been boosted by a large contingent of foreign fighters. Ukrainian officials say 20,000 international volunteers have traveled to help defend the country. Panama, Portugal, America. A number of different battalions now accept foreign volunteers. And many of those on the front lines come from Britain. Once soldiers in our armed forces who spent much of the past year fighting for Ukraine. So I'm taking them back anyway. Oh, straight past them. I've come to meet a group of fighters who've recently returned from the conflict. They've agreed to share their experiences with me and months of footage their unit filmed at the front. Age just 21. James quit the British Army to go. They needed help, so I knew I can fight. Mm -hmm. I, that's what I was trained to do, so that's why I got up and won. Yeah. <laughs> do you think the British volunteers make a difference to the overall war effort in Ukraine? Yeah, yeah, big time as well. It's like, like the Ukrainian SEALs, and like, it makes them feel like they're not alone. To focus on Tim. Tim had served in Afghanistan, but Ukraine, he says, was very different. In the British Army, I've never come under tank fire. You know, that's, that's just not something that happens. In the British Army, we have the tanks, we have the helicopters, we have the fast air and things like that. <laughs> Here, it's all against you. He and the others joined a battalion fighting in the east. Oh, damn, we just got to this new place. This is where we sleep. Our ammunition store. Documenting their activities along the way. Many British volunteers have military experience and are seen as coming with valuable skills. But as Newsnight's been finding out, it's not all. Seen a Facebook advertisement. It was all in Ukrainian, but I translated it. If you're not going to handle the gun, uh, contact us. So I gave them a ring and just told them that I'd been in the... I had, like, cadet experience. I know it's not nothing much, but... They said, we'll give you a month's training and we'll send you out on the front line. You'll be fighting in Car the Kharkiv district. You didn't have any military experience previously? Yeah, no military experience. What made you think you could go out and actually be of use? I just knew I was down for it. Over the past year, they've spent months involved in intense fighting. You want to get that first firefight over. You watch videos of firefights. Then when you're there and the rounds do go down. For me, I'm, I, my training kicked in. The first time I ever experienced combat, and I remember just, there was a, there was a mud, mud hill, and I remember just looking up, and as I looked up, a tank rounds came straight through the bushes, straight for me. I didn't think, like, I thought, I'd, like, yeah, I'm going to get killed here right now. And as they spent months coming under fire from Russian artillery, this round missed James by inches. Everyone OK? It's landed right next to me. I can't hear nothing. I can't hear a thing. As they took part in operations to push back Russian forces and recapture Ukrainian ground, it meant coming face to face with the Russian army. I remember just going up the back of the tree line. Five prisoners, five prisoners just there. What do we got here? A couple of Russian prisoners. How does that work? A surrender. A surrender. It was strange. It made it feel real. Did you feel sorry for them? Yeah, I empathised. My biggest fear out there were actually getting captured. Five Russian prisoners surrendered. I wanted to kill them. Did you? I wanted to kill them. There's a high chance they could have killed some of my very good friends. How do you treat them? We just hand them over to the Ukrainian authorities. Did you speak to them? Yeah, yeah, I said a few words to him. I said a few words in his ear. I wanted to give him something to remember. In August, a British volunteer from Norfolk joined their group. We were close. Always close. Uh, looked up to him. He's an older brother. He <laughs> can light up a room. He really could. Craig McIntosh was a landscape gardener. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. He was funny. He'd always do some crazy thing to make us laugh. Uh, we was really close growing up. 
He always wanted to go in the army ever since he was little. He'd have all his toy soldiers. He always played with them. But when he travelled to Ukraine, his family were unaware of his plans. I didn't find out till the day before he was going. Took him to the airport, said not to stress or worry. Uh, and yeah, that's the first I knew about it. What, what was your reaction? I was gutted. Did you ever try and talk him out of it? All the time. Even on the way to the airport. Like, just, yeah. Anything to get him to come home, but he had his heart set on it. Initially, I was very angry. It didn't make sense to me. I thought at first, well, why would you do that? Why would you leave everyone and not tell anyone? And then I thought, wow, like, what a courageous thing to do. But they were to receive terrible news. It was the 25th of August that I found out that he'd been shot. Crushed me. The police um, come to my dad's and, yeah, they told us. It hurt. Most people die of cancer or common illness, not being shot out at war. I don't know, I just didn't believe it. It didn't feel real. Six weeks later, his body was repatriated to be laid to rest at home. It was heartbreaking. Like he said, no one else would understand. He's got to do it for his own reasons, and that's what he's done. Same as a lot of people. They feel like they can make a big difference, which they are. He was happy, and got to be happy for him. Your brother's a hero, but yeah, still don't bring him back though. Not long after Craig's death, another family in the UK received devastating news. Simon Lingard is the most recent British fighter to be killed and a father of two teenage boys. At Christmas, his friends and family said their goodbyes. It's clear those willing to swap their lives in the UK for the battlefields of Ukraine see it as a noble cause that comes with comradeship and adventure. I've got a purpose in life out there. I'm happy, I've got my friends and I've got a purpose. But for those who pay the highest price, the cost is felt at home. He found what he'd always been searching for. I think just time will make it easier. From the photos I've seen, he looked like he was happy. I'm trying to think of it in a happy way, that he was with his team and they were all in a group, happy kind of thing. But I wish we could have kept him here.